I certainly can understand the sentiments of Milach or David, the mighty messenger of Yah's great mitzvah's commands. When he used the word Gila, I was glad. I was overexcited. It's beyond superlatives to express how thrill, how glad I was when the gates of Yerushalayim was open that we could enter in Jubeant the house, the gathering of Yisrael to offer up the great accolades of praise unto him. We do it succinctly from one step to the other until there's a great cassandra of accolades of praise and shaha that we truly esteem him for his greatness of his power. You just cannot explain your Shua Hamashiach. As the old Kiddush would say, it has to be in you. He has to reveal that. So on the intellectual paradigm, he cannot be explained. He must be made known. Yada. We must experience this living word. And once we begun to truly experience it, then it produces what Arazachin Yaramiya taught some Shabbats ago. It produces a change. There's a magnificent change. So we see the change of the season that is approaching. The summer has its splendor and certainly the fall as well. The winter. By the way, you that have joined us on the live stream, this is somewhat, I don't want to use the words gloomy day, but it is, I would say, a colorless day. There is not the amplifying of the beauty of the colors of summertime. We have had rain, this overcast, but I'm excited about Yah. I am. This is the fire of the fuel in my nefesh, my living substance, that keeps me energized and strong. Perseverance is my frontlet to the midst of all of the small agonies of trials. I cannot say that I've had great trials. I would be a liar. And the vast populace would be a liar too. You don't understand my circumstances. Well, we can go to other sectors of this nation and nations of the earth. And then when you can express sympathy for that one, whose circumstances are greater in depths of misery than yours, then we can talk. As far as you trying to convince me, you will go to hell with that. I will not buy it from any of us. And I've labored hard, I say to my Isha, I bless Yah for, for war if it's nothing but to wash my neck off for the moment. The appreciation of that is resounding. I, I really... It's just the truth. You may not, but I do. 
So when I can see the excellence of Yah in all of his creation, we began to determine and see the greatness of his power in Yisra'ya. Only then, only then will we understand the excellence of the power of Yahshua HaMashiach. You can try to explain that until your head spin around. It cannot be explained. It must be personified, brought to light from us. The way we walk, the way we talk, the way we dress, the way we perceive, the way we understand. The light must shine in the density of this dark world. There must be a tifra about the people of Yah that is so beautiful that even the wicked must acknowledge it, although they may not understand. But they know that there is something there beyond the expression of their tongue uh, to try to express it. I don't want to be like the world. I don't want the attitude of the world. I don't want to engage in the depths of the sadistic wickedness of the world. I don't want my mind trained by the pleasures that we perceive are pleasures of this world. I want my hafiz, my delight, to be in the Torah of Yah. When this word began to form your mind, your leba and your lev. There is a mighty change. The attitude is not the same. The disposition is not like it once was. And that's a fact. Whether you buy it or not, I frankly don't give a damn. And so I speak to me today. I speak to refresh me. The Torah tells me to speak to myself in psalms, spiritual psalms in Mish, Mashel. So I shall speak to me. You don't have to listen. You don't have to grasp the depths of this, but I will speak to me. I want to teach from the perch, the platform of one particular word. And I have titled this message, which I generally never do, there are occasions. I want to express unto the nation of his election, success and the derrick of the road to becoming successful. I want to define the success of Yah by its elements the attributes of Torah I want to show us what causes us to be unsuccessful that we are unsuccessful I want to show us the little things that cause death despair and separation from Yah. He wants his people to be successful. He wants us to have success. If you actually in your concordance try to find the word success it's only mentioned one time but you must be a laborer of Torah to understand how to define it according to Torah to find the riches of the nuggets of Yah in truth we are a generation that will not labor we will not dig beyond the surface of things There's often times that I know that they are concerned that they will say those that care for me, re up, don't overdo it, slow down a little. But I think 
my mind brings all things into perspective. The old farmer would take the jackass, the old mule, and he would plow all the day long. And that was simple, simply intervals of taking the old mule to the watering trough and give it just a little corn. He will put the frontlets on that mule and the mule worked at a consistent pace, not like a thoroughbred. It did not run like a thoroughbred. But even the management of that mule system that Yah calls him to be bred for, that it produced the excellence of the labor of that farmer. But the farmer did not abuse the mule. He would often take it to the trough to water. So that is my energy and strength that I drink constantly from the well, from the living water. Whether I'm tired, whether I'm feeling lethargic or eerie, I drink constantly. I drink from the Torah to revive me, to restore me, to bring the Rafa, the healing, the Mufid, not just to my physical being, above all to my spiritual state of consciousness. And by that, you grow. And your strength is multiplied. And you move with strength that you knew not that you had. And the mule in many cases lived a long, long time. Until the old one hung the harness up. Many times the mule outlived the one that plowed the mule to pass down. And the mule was consistent and persistent. Have we lost that? Have we lost on this road of succeeding, being successful, and having the success of Yah in Yoshua HaMashiach? When the world sees those that they perceive are successful, they are drawn with magnetism. Are they not? Are they not? They are drawn to their appearance, although their physical appearance uh, may not be as beautiful as yours. But there is a perception uh, in your peripheral, in your vision, uh, that you see them differently. The people of Yah should succeed we should have success it is commanded by Yah for us to be successful in all endeavors but there's a process and there is a way there is a direct an order that is precise a way that has been prescribed in grain in the quarrels of Torah for us, just like a road map to get there. And then once we began to understand the way, we must halach, walk, strive in that way. We cannot go outside of the parameter of that way. We must walk in the way of light. And in order for us to understand that and for it to be justified, success. And the road to successfulness. That we can become successful. I want to, first of all, because I want to establish this teaching from one of the writings 
the muridunavi'in, the prophets, the messengers of Yah that with many people they're not coming with this book. So in order to give credence to the book that I will begin this teaching out of, I will refer us all to a book, hopefully, that we are somewhat familiar with. We're not actually familiar with the writings of Torah because we frankly don't give a damn about Torah. There are those that love me for a moment and then they despise me when they realize that I will not cater to their superficiality. I talked to one on this week and there was this person that loved me like she loved sugar. And spoke highly of Re'ach David Yisrael. Now all of a sudden, what I listen to him, he makes you feel bad. He doesn't say things to promote my self needs. I say to that individual, whether you listen to me again or not, to die, my friend. Damn your flesh. Let it die and rot in the gates of hell. I will speak truth. And this word cuts. And cut off that fatness of our heads. And the wickedness that we have harbored in our minds, in our hearts. Not against me, but against you. I want to proceed in this teaching in success. And the door, the gate, the shekha, the opening for us to become successful. Is it Yah's will? Do we understand the tenets of success and the manifestation? I want to begin here in Yahushua ben Nan, Yahushua ben Nan, Joshua chapter 10. And in verse 13, I would have begun. This is in context of the flow that when Yisrael, when there was a great battle there in Gibeon, that Yah had given them the great Teshua, the great victory. And so it was written by even the Norby of this great battle. There's one by the name of Yahushua, Joshua. He speaks to the strength of the nation of Yisrael. And he quotes in Joshua 10, 13. He says on the Shemesh, that which rule the day with magnificent elegance and the beauty. It is the prima donna of the day. There's no light that outshines it. It rules the day. It rules the time of Yah. He said, and even the sun stood still by the command of Almighty Yah. He says, and the Yareach that brilliant body of light that rules in the night season when it heard the very voice of Almighty Yahweh they stayed in their places until Yisra'ya the nation of Almighty Yahweh until they Nachan the proper vengeance. They revenge themselves upon their enemies. 
and he makes a profound proclamation, is not this Hattab written? Has it not been spoken or written? He says in the straw, the book, the Sefer, that which has been rolled together, is it not written in the book of Yesha and the book of Jasher? He said, the sun stood still in the midst of Jemaim and did not go down for the whole day. Is that a proclamation that somewhere we've lost time? No, sir. No, ma'am. But even the most greatest of his excellent in creation to govern man, when the word of Yah is spoken, then even that will stand still and adhere to, to what your command. Even the excellence and the brightness of that light. And we ought to have the light and the brightness of Yahshua HaMashiach in our depths of our nefesh. That even when the Torah speaks to us, the Ruach HaKod, that's what calls us to stand still in the midst of darkness. The moon governs the night. Even in the midst of Hoshach, in the seasons of darkness, in the seasons of great ill and the approach of the enemy, the short them, the demons of darkness uh, that ride upon our minds to draw us away uh, from the brilliance of the light of Torah in the path, the way that brings us uh, to the successfulness uh, of the activities of Almighty Yahweh. It is time out us as a nation. We continue to make excuses for every damn thing. Yet we make no advancement for Yah. And we are resolved in our own Rishia, our wicked minds. We practice in our wicked activities, and yet we never succeed. Success. The door for Yisra to become successful. It is not by your strength. It's by the sure way. If I ask us, do we understand the definitive, how it's defined the word success? I will find a plethora of Definitions into a lack of speaking. And yet we miss the simplicity of all things. I will use one of the major resources here in America that has credibility among linguists those that construct words and language. We must understand that the Dabarim, the words, the Dabar, the words of Yah, it is the power of his substance. Everything he spoke to us was life. It only became death when we defied it. So everything that is in this book, it feeds us. It nourishes us. It brings us in the way of the success of Yah. And we become successful. And yet when we go into the marketplaces, men will part their ways. And look. When the Baptists are on, go into the place to buy the cloth. To prepare the beauty of her garments. Then those that perceive her. They will see the light of her beauty. They will see the success. Of her countenance. Her pony. Her perfection. In Torah. How Torah has shaped. Refined. And redefined. Her essence. 
her substance, what she is her worth, and it directs all of that to the beauty of Almighty Yah, because the mind of Yahshua Hamashiach of all discipline, all obedience, for he did not some things. He pleased Almighty Yah in all that he did. He is the word that is made. Baza, it has been created, made uh, flesh. It is the same power of that word that was made flesh that makes flesh. And the enemy, what enemy? It is the corruption of our own hearts. You can blame it on the devil all damn day. It's my devilish ways. It's your devilish and wicked ways. That has brought about this malignant cancer that eats at you. And you never succeed. We never come up to the higher grounds. We never grow. We never produce. What Torah says we should produce. I began here to give credence unto the book I want to begin reading out of. It is the book of Yesha. I want to begin reading in chapter 58 and verse 11. This to give us a narrative. This was an account when Esau came out against the elect Zira the seed of Yisrael, against Yah's children. Yah gave them power to prevail, to smite them. And there is a constant Esa battling in our minds. It is a mind that makes mockery of Yah and uh, disputes with him. That's the Esa. They came out of the same womb. They were twins. And so you're familiar with that brotherly spirit uh, and that corruption of your own mind that caused you to move beyond the place that Yah commands you. When Yah commanded the Shemshach, Shemesh, the sun, it stood still for the day. He said to the moon, you stay in your place. And they're all given a Torah. He established the Torah, the law, the order of all things from creation. It is one thing, Yisra'ya, where the power of this testimony speaks unto us. It brings about empirical proof. It's evident in us. And the power of that success, it is seen by the world. It is expressed to the world. I don't give a damn if you don't have two wooden nickels to rub together. Success is not based upon that. Let me, in retrospect, I want to define the word success. Now we know that in our vernacular, it is an adjective. I'm not a linguistic, I'm not a scholar of speech. But we know that there are seven parts to the English vernacular, but yet there are four parts that are major. Adverbs, adjectives, noun, and verbs. And so what an adjective does, it gives clarity to a noun, which is a person, place, or thing. So it is a modifier. It makes it clean. It kind of dresses it up and gives it a, a more lively credibility. In essence, though now man 
But then we began to incorporate adjectives and verbs. He was a beautiful, strong, mighty man. So it gives uh, a brilliant sea and a different picture of just the noun man, doesn't it? In our vernacular, this word success from one of the most prominent resources that is used throughout the world, this is how it is defined. I want to read it according to that resource. It is an adjective uh, that express favorability, profitable, fruitful, happy, prosperous, and strongly wealthy. One has a wealth that is beyond the monetary expression. There's a wealth in one's countenance. There's a wealth in one's walk. One is prosperous. One has the eshia, the happiness of the blessed assurance of Torah in one's bosom. Now this is from one of the major resources that I define this word. Now what I contemplate by the Ruach HaKodash is to define this from the bosom of Yah. To show us the pattern and the examples are of how we ascertain and draw unto the great wealth of your success and show us why we are so unsuccessful. Why we do not succeed. Why we don't overcome. So in the midst of this great battle, in the midst of this tremendous agony of pressure. Yah gives victory unto his nation, his people. It says here clearly, book of Yasha, chapter 58, and verse 11. This is the only place that this word successful is used. In Torah. It says an Yosef was successful. My careful analysis of this word as I, it's amazing that in the Hebraic writing the phonics of the words, you spell it O N E. One, it sounds as though that that would be the enunciation. The Yats in its paleo and the writing of the scholars of Torah, they spell it. You see, we always thinking about one, me, myself, and I. Ya is ichat, is one, from that degree. But you spell it actually O W N. Un. Un. It says that he was successful. Now, from the Hebraic writing, I will define what that means. It is one having the vigor of excitement. One having wealth. One having ability. One having the power. One having the might. One having the strength and the substance. It is the substance of this living Torah. It is the wisdom of his might. He had no wealth. Yosef had no land. But he had the mind of Yah. It was a mind that was proliferated with the wisdom, the knowledge of Torah. Why? Because he was 
the elect one. He was a chosen one that even the sons would bow. We don't want that. Our wickedness says uh, he's not a messenger. Yet yours says uh, that even your brothers shall bow before you. They shall come and submit unto you. This is the wickedness of this corrupt generation. We don't want to submit to each other. We don't want to bow and to commit to each other. He was successful. He was home. He had the vigor of Torah in his bosom. He had the wealth of Torah. He had strength in his loins. He had might. He had substance. He had wealth. You think that that manifested because he was in the land of Mizraim? It was there from birth. It was there when the same sun that stood still, uh, then he is represented as the very coming, uh, or he is a prototype of our Yoshua Hamashiach. Yeah. Yeah. He came out of the house of Yisrael. Get all bowed down unto him. He was successful. He had vigor and strength. Well, there must be bery or a fruitfulness of his successfulness. May I proceed? He was successful, not in some, but in all, all his derech. He was successful in all of his ways. He was successful in all of his ways. And because of that, Yah was with him. He was with him. And because he was successful, because of his commitment unto Torah, we are not committed to one damn thing. There is no command more profound than this. There's only one other that is equal, that we love our achim, we, we love our hohim, as we love ourselves. We are flat out damn hypocrites. I'm talking to you. He was successful in everything he did. In dealing with the porters, the men servants, the servants that serve him. His attitude, his spirit, his heart, his mind. He loved Yah. And because of that, because of that, Yah was with him. It is says, and Yah, you see the word give or gave, Yah, nothing. He bestowed. He brought forth from the excellent of his bosom. He gave, he gave unto, he granted Yosef. He uses the words rab, additional. You see men, they don't grow from one year to the other. You see women that are as silly as hell today. Five years from that day, they will still be silly. You see, those that are begrudging and wicked today, they will be begrudging and wicked five years from today. And that's a fact. I will prove what Torah says. And because he was successful, because he had the ability to hear, then Yah added. The word rab means abundant much more. So he added, take that from that wicked servant and give it to the one that have much. You don't realize your wickedness in the ways of your vile nature, yours taken. And Yah gave Yosef additional huchma, wisdom that his skillfulness was beyond the comprehension of the whole land of Misraim. 
He had knowledge. But the science and knowledge of Yah that was greater than all of their gods could supply. We don't succeed in one damn thing. We don't grow. We grow lethargic. Lazy as hell. And we're wicked. I don't take anything back. Nothing. And I will not apologize. Period. Don't do that. He gave him additional wisdom and honor. Chabods. That men spoke highly of him. Well, you are not spoken highly of. That's all right. He caused the heathens to speak highly of him. In Jack. I know you think that I will say things to promote me, but damn me. My Sean, I we went out on Thursday to retrieve things for the community. I tell you, I've not had so many compliments in all of my life on Thursday. Everywhere I went, men, Caucasian, whomever women, my Ishaw and I. This one man, he was a tall Caucasian. He was told in Oximion, he would make these. Yarame ya azakin, he would eat off the head. And so we went to get some tea tree oil. And so when we went to Trader Joe's, only in there for a moment, he says to me, the last time you came in, I met you in this spot. You were flat and looking nice. Look at you today. You're still rolling. Like a white boy talking like that. No, it doesn't speak of anything that one possess. It speaks of the excellence of Yah. We are beautiful people. No damn clothes make me. If I got on dirty blue jeans, I'm still the same man. I don't have to get dressed up to go anywhere. You understand? There's something greater than that. And we're so silly, we will, we will reject that. And yet, even the wicked will show you honor. Who were the Egyptians? Were they the seed of Israel? Israel? No, they were not. Moving on. Moving on. Not only did he give him Cabo, but he gave him splendor, this regal look that when men would look at him, they, they, they were drawn by the magnetism of this charming beauty. Not because he had on a thousand dollar suit, diamond rings on his hands. He had a splendor. He had a way to walk. If I must use it this time just for cognates of us, in essence, quote, he had grace, unquote. He walked with grace. He walked with fluidity. He walked with the flow. That's what splendor is. He had a splendor like no one else. Like no one else. And love toward him, love not toward him. There was love in the hearts that Yah caused to be put, love in the hearts of those of Misrim, the Egyptians. Throughout the whole land, they loved him. Isn't that the attitude of the world when they perceive they're dealing with one that is successful? That they are drawn to the one's magnetism, to the knowledge of their wealth, their vigor, their strength, their name in light. Are they not Israel? He calls love a chava in the hearts of the people because he was successful. Because he showed the king, the melach, this is what is going to come upon the land. And even though when sin was the most beautiful woman tried to thrust herself upon him, 
He will not give in to that uh, drawing and temptation. We are drawn by our own wickedness, our own state of mind. It is your own conscience that draws you away from what is right the right way. You can't blame nobody. It's you. You don't want to take a close look at your own damn wickedness. You want to blame someone else. He was not given to that. Whereby even Potiphar says, In the house of hell shall you go. Yet there was one that remembered that there was a revelation that needed to be interpreted, and he was the man. See, when Yah gives us that kind of wisdom, the old man, you will see the beauty of the light of Torah. Their feet always walk in Torah and truth. They're guarded. Same thing with you, Bath of Tizayon. You're not getting by. The success of Yah. And the door to successfulness. This is success. When there's a love in the heart of the people to love you. And they don't even know how to love. Yah puts it there. He puts it there. It says that he reigned. He had authority over the whole country for 40 years. And all the countries of the Philistine and the Ka'an and the Zadorian on the other, other side of Yada and the river, this is what they did. Even those that were strangers unto Yah, he will cause men to give much unto our bosom. I said to Oxymion, I went in the store on Thursday. And the young man, the cashier, says to me, you look mighty splivy and fine. That meant nothing to me. I said, sir, do you have any discounts for a man like me? He said, I'm sorry, but we don't have any and so I was not disgruntled or offended and so he looks at me he begins to dig in his discount coupons he pulled out one that was 20% off to me that was enough then he pulls out another one that was 20% off I said to my issue he gave me 40% off. Our I love, I said, thank you kindly, sir. Appreciate that. He said, thank you. He caused men to give. They're not giving us a damn thing. They love this man, you see. He made sure that there was food there when the season of drought came. When a messenger makes sure that there is meat at our nefesh, in the time of great battles, we ought to love him. We ought to honor him. We don't do that. Proceeding. And when those that were wicked came against him, or those that were beyond the reach, it said that they brought presents Micha. they brought gifts of their booties they brought tribute that's just like someone says to you you look so beautiful oh you look so excellent man that's what a tribute is so they brought gifts Micha. they brought tributes unto your safe uh, they brought those presents, those oblations to Yosef all of his days. And the whole country was in the hand of Yosef. And they brought to him yearly tributes uh, as it was regulated, as it was commanded. For Yosef had fought against all his surrounding enemies. We must fight the enemy of Torah. 
And the enemy of Torah is this vile, carnal, wicked, sadistic mind of yours. It is not subject. It cannot be. It is the damn God of your belly. Rises up in animosity, in anger, in resistance. Of course, I'm the only one that ever resisted. We will never succeed. You will never see success. And we will never be able to walk in the door of successfulness. I'm going to break it down. Don't worry. I'm taking my time because of the colorless day today. I had said I would sit down. I don't have the sense of the spree when the the vivaciousness of the sunbeams down, you know, it's warm. This time of the year, we're in what we call the dog days. We have 15 to 18, 20 days in August, known as the dog days, where temperatures reach 90, 95. And yet the real feel is like 105 and 10. And the coolness of the night is only down to about 85, 80. But yet it feels like it's 90. The other dog days to let you know that the end of summer is coming. And to have a day here in August, in the 60s, ah, it is unheard of. And so it's colorless here today. Proceeding. And so all of his enemies, his surrounding enemies, he had yarat. He has subdued them. We don't even subdue our flesh because we don't impel it. We don't kill this filthy stench of a cesspool of corruption. It's an enemy of Torah. We don't judge ourselves accordingly as Torah commands us to judge us. He subdued all his enemies. All of his oe, those that despise. We think our flesh loves us. But our own flesh will cause us to eat ourselves into oblivion, to do things to ourselves. A man shooting up drugs and cocaine all day and he's drinking, his liver is going rotten, he is eating like a beast. Even our own flesh doesn't love us. Even when we hear the words of correction, you need to slow down. Even our own flesh don't give a damn about us. And you tell me you can love, go to hell, man. That is the truth, my young Ak. Our own flesh doesn't give a damn about us. That's why your shoes said you must kill it. Every day you must destroy it. You must bring it down to the dungeons of hell. And we think that we have some kind of superior mandate in our own damn corrupt minds. You don't have nothing. Yeah. Stupid men think that they possess some kind of ecclesiastic superior conscience. You don't have a damn thing. Because if it was, you would see it. Every man can see it. You can see a man that is successful in his life. The way he carries himself. The way he looks. You can see the ones that are unsuccessful. I'll get to that son, all right? Don't worry about it. Hallelujah. So he yarat, he brought down. When you yarat, you bring down that opposition of your mind that caused you not to walk in the way. He pleased Yah and all he did. He walked in the way of Yah. And we must walk in the ways of Almighty Yahweh. He subdued and the whole country was in the hand of Yosef. And Yosef he sat securely upon his throne in Misraim, in Egypt. Hear this in verse 13 from the book of Yusha 58. 
It says that also all of his achim, his brothers, a brother's a born adversary, friend loves at all time, wounded in the house of friends. It doesn't mean that a brother's a gets one because he's an adversary. A true brother will point out, was Yoshua, is he not a brother of Yisraya? Sure he is. He is the brother that gave all to redeem us. Because your brother is your adversary, they're brothers that are adversary on the football field. That doesn't mean they despise each other. They're brothers on the basketball court are adversaries. They're silly. And our detraction from the finities of words, we are ignorant, damn it, and we don't want to learn that. I've always been a man that has had the ingenuity, the ingenuity to want to learn. Not to be superior, but to help me along the path and the journey of life. I've always, I've always admired men that I knew that were much more supreme in their knowledge than me. I was never offended. Their characteristics were much more beautiful than mine. They had an essence and a fruitfulness about them that was so beautiful. Man, you just want to take some of their ways and incorporate them into your life. We don't want to do that today. We don't operate like that. Oh, that sister, how, what do you think of her? Well, she, she looked all right. No, she, she's beautiful than you. That's why you don't want to compliment. Well, that brother, well, you know, you, you know, his shoes didn't look right. So what? Who gives a damn? That's the way we talk. Well, I look as well as you. Well, okay, you look as well as I do. So what? We both look well. You're not getting around this today. And I'm going to teach it too. So I'm trying to keep my composure. If you understand. And also all the Achim, the brothers, of the son of Yaakov. The house of Yisrael, they dwelt or they live betak, or securely, without opposition. That's the way we should dwell. We should have the security of Torah. We should have this tikva, this confidence, this assurance, this strength. When a man is strong, you see it. You know a man that's pretending he is strong. You know one that doesn't have the strength that he wants to have? You know a woman that's trying to modify what she thinks is beautiful for, for the acceptance of others? You know she's not beautiful. Let her pull that off and you see what she really is. This is the most intriguing aspect that I want to get to. It says, all the days, every day, cool, the whole, the fullness of his life, all the days of Yosef, all the days of his life, it says they were peri, they were fruitful. There was an abundance of fruit, there was much. All of his days. Can I look at myself? You say the same thing. And see fruitfulness. All the days. We see the fruit of darkness. The fruits of wickedness. The fruits of our own ill and vileness. I don't want to be like I was yesterday. All the days. All the days. All the days of his life, all the days, they were fruitful and multiplied exceedingly. As the old ones would say, I want to go, quote, from faith to faith. We should every day grow from maturity to maturity, proceeding up the ladder. That we will know that when people see us. That they will know we're doing well. That is what success is. When you talk to your kinsmen, they say, oh, she's doing so well. She got a job. She got this. Her children in college. Oh, she's doing well. I have a natural sister. She called me the other day. Ah! 
I haven't called her back. Because the first thing she said, oh, they're doing well. Oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, she's doing so well. Oh, yeah. Everybody, oh, yeah. They, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they're doing well. That's what we think. Uh, you, you see, that word is synonymous uh, with success, and it is actual true. Oh, baby, all of our children are doing so well. Although they got three or four babies. Although they're living in the project. Oh, she's doing well. She's got a job now. We're working in the vineyard of y'all. Yeah. I want you to retain that we're working in the vineyard. We got to make sure we look at our vineyard or our vineyard over here. It's not properly pruned. And so you have the aggressiveness of all the nutrition not going in the beautiful scuffernines and scuffernards into the leaves. We'll get it right this year though. And when the Word of Yah or the strength of his living Torah is not going up to the proper place. Where? To the heart. To the leba, to the mind. Not going through our eye in for some kind of self-serving purpose to prove our, our, our intellectualness of uh, uh, the knowledge we have of Torah. And so it is just passing through our ears in our ears uh, and going out the other side. Uh, then you don't see the fruitfulness of one's nature or the spirituality of one's walk. Uh, you cannot say you're spiritual and walking in deep darkness uh, in every kind of corrupting. You're not being successful. You're not on the pathway of being successful. I'm going to break some, break some things down. I don't give a damn who it offends He was multiplied, the children of Yisra, yeah, they multiplied exceedingly in the land, and they served Yah all their days. And they, and they, and they served Yah all their days as their father Yaakov had commanded. Are we taking the wisdom of our forefather Yaakov? Are we really serving Yah? Are we serving the vile nature of our flesh here's a people that was in shibi they were in captivity our forefathers just like those that were many that came to this country and yet in the midst of all of that they had success they were fruitful they multiplied as Azar came pointed out unto us uh, in that very dynamic teaching. Uh, when there was no light, there was light among them. Uh, when they walked out into the darkness of the world, they could see their light. Uh, they were not trying to interact or to become like the world. Uh, they were different than the world. The daughters of Tizayah did not try to dress like the world and act like the world. They were different. Uh, this one said to me on Thursday, he said, man, I, I'm checking that style of yours. You're right. I have no damn style. I understood what he was saying. There's only one style for us. We style ourselves according to this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Success, the door that brings us unto success. As I spoke to us concerning the word success and one of its application, how it is expressed, it brings about this great vigor, this wealth, this ability. It is innate in true Yisraya, it is birth in them. It is in the nation. That's why there are many pretenders and false perpetrators, but they're not real. I want to direct your attention to this account. As the Nobi Hoshea, Hosea, chapter 12, as he spoke, even this man had betrothed a harlot. We have betrothed the harlot, haven't we? We all married to a harlot spirit, to our own ways, in our own mind, in our own will. That's a spirit of harlotry. It's not faithful. It's not faithful. It is not a faithful spirit. 
It tells you, I can, I will, and you, God, I'm going to help you, God. And then the next minute, it forsakes you. It denounces you. Say, oh, you don't have to do that. Our own flesh doesn't give a damn about us. They cannot produce love. Love is ruach. Yah is love. The Nabi, he writes distinctively to us. He reminds us of Yah's choosing of his favoritism. He had favor one over the other. And it was birth in him. Is birth in Yisrael that we succeed, that we are successful, that we have success, that we have own. As one would say, when one takes advantage of the challenge and beats one in basketball, one would say, He own you, man. In my days, we would say that. Oh, man, did, did you see him? He owned him. In simply words, they were speaking Hebrew, they didn't know. And a lot of the dialect of our forefathers here in this country under the diaspora, they spoke Hebrew. And those words were passed down. They said, well, that's Golik. Yeah, I had meeting. They knew. And one will say, man, boy, Shimmer, he owned the preacher, boy. He, man, he crossed someone behind the back, stepped, and boom. When someone knew that one was successful over the other, he would say, boy, I will own you. And when he accomplished the feat, he said, I'll own you now, boy. That's the truth. And so this own, this vigor, this wealth, this strength uh, was in one that was called Yaqub from the beginning. He had power, he had substance. So the Nobi points that out unto us. He in Hosea chapter 12, verse 3. Hosea 3, 12, 12, 3. It says here, it says, Jacob, Israel, he took his brother, he took his brother, he grabbed hold Hosea, Hosea 12, 3, he took his brother by the hill in the womb. He took his brother by the heel in the womb. It says, and by his strength, his success, by his own, by his vigor, by the wealth of what riches Yah had put in him before he was ever born. The beauty of his essence he took his brother by the heel. Does it say by his strength? By whose strength? It says by his strength. He took his brother by the heel by his strength. By his own. He owned Asa. He owned him. He took him by the heel by his own. By his own wealth of riches that will come forth out of his loins. By his place among the prominent uh, and those that Yah positioned. He positioned every last one of us in his house uh, to make a strong house. And damn it, uh, we are weak as cats dung. Yeah. You see, that's why the woman doesn't like me now. Yeah. She listened and heard a few statements and she got excited. And then when he, she saw that Riach would not play Kita, he doesn't make me feel well. Now if I came on like a lustful man, she would like that. Sure she would. <laughs> I tell her, get your filth out of your damn wicked heart. He took his ach by the heel in the womb. I can see if it said they were on the playground, but in the womb, in the victim, in the belly of his aim. He took him by the womb. By his strength, it was in him. 
the own, the vigor of Yah, the strength of Yah, the wealth of Yah, within Yaakov. You shall not be called Yaakov, but your name shall be called Yisra'ya or Israel. For Yah has prevailed in this body. Only when Yah prevails within us, we are known as Yisra'ya. By his own strength, his own, uh, by his own vigor, his own power, his own ability, it says that he had power, he had the sorrow, he had the ability to be persistent, he exerted himself, he had the power to captivate. Do we exert ourselves? Do we have that strength? He had the power, the sora. He had power with all Maria. He had power. It's not after we're birthed or through the event of time we are elected. No, it was before you were ever born. He put that in us to restore the beauty to his name. To walk in his name, to live in his name, to eat in his name, to shout in his name, to sing in his name, to live by his name. He said, that one, Yah had put something in him. He had power to do that with Yah. So he didn't know he had power. Yah gave him that own. He owned Esau. And again, he is still going to own Esau. He owned him. He owned him. He had the vigor and the strength because he had power with Yah. Is this not Yisra'ya? Who are we then? And he had power. He had Sarah. He had the persistence of what Yah had put in him from birth. It was in him in the womb. To understand the captivation of this, look down at verse 7. He talks about Yaakov here, verse 7 of Hoshia 12. He says he is talking about Yaakov. He is a merchant. And the balance of the siege mirama or this false delusion of stats. This mirama, this serenity of treachery. That's in his hands. We can be a treacherous people, can't we? You will lie on that one. And then you lie to her on this one. And then you lie to her about her and lie to you about her. That's the way we are. Wicked as hell. That's treachery. That's wicked. In him. He loves... To us, Sheikh, he loves to oppress. Don't you know that when you defraud an ach or a sister, an ach and, and a hot, and you get you defraud them with this emotions or substance, and you get it by deceit of lies, don't you know that is oppression? That is oppression. When you do that, Yisraya, I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen to those that oppress. And we think that we're being successful. We have success. Well, if I had my own job and this and my own money, I would be successful. No. You're being dead to your crock of your buttock. You wouldn't have a damn thing. You would be a slave to the world. And you still wouldn't have a damn thing. Your mind filth and I would be filthy with your own job and your own money. Your past in this filthy will be filthy then. He speaks in verse 8. He says, An Ephraim, Israel, that's who Ephraim is. Yet I have become, I am become a Shah. I have become wealthy and rich. He says, This is what Israel says. 
I have found success. I have found substance. I have found own. I have found vitality and vigor and substance. Where? Where do we find it? How is it manifest? Don't worry. I got us all. You're not getting by. Even your dead mom is not getting by. He's have found substance on. I've found success. I've found the vigor. This is Ephraim. Your Okov, he said, uh, you have extract by your own oppression. That's why Yah says, uh, I will not call you Yahoba. I will call you Ephraim. I will call you Israel. I will call you Israel. You have prevailed. Hear the Torah of Yah Israel. He says, uh, in my own labor, in my own yig, yigia, we would say, man, I got me a gig. I got me a gig, man. I got work to do. In your own gig, your own yigia. He says, uh, in all my labors, uh, in all of what I produce, the product that comes forth out of me, my yigiya, what is the substance of me, all of that that I've ascertained, the properties of wealth, the properties of wisdom, the properties of knowledge, the properties of understanding, the properties of the fear of God, it brings, uh, it brings wealth to us. He say, they shall find, they shall not, sell. they shall find, they shall find, they shall find, they shall find, no, no, no OV, no iniquity, yeah. no perverse activities, no wickedness, no odds, no sin. He said, in all of my labor, of course I know in our labor we find iniquity, don't we? He said, in all of my labor, I find, and you can't find, no of he, no iniquity, no perverse manipulation, no wickedness, no corruption to abandon the Torah of Yah. Hear me? Hallelujah. You shall find no iniquity in me that were Sin. Well, we know sin is when one defy Torah. He said, you will not find that in me. In all of my yigi, yeah, in all of my gigging, got me a gig, man. In the days, that's what we was in, the 60s. You hear them say, man, I got me a gig. You know what they meant. They said, I got me a gig, man. I got me a yigi, yeah. Got me a gig. Got me some work. And they will be excited. Get up on time too. This is what Ephraim says. And all that you see of me. You will find no iniquity. You will find no perverse corruption that is vile. A stench. That is so impugnant. And stinks. To the highest of hell. You will find that in me because there is no sin in me. There's no will to defy Torah. There's no passion to do desire that. He said, that's my labor. That's what we identify by our labor. And that's why we are not successful in the way of Yah. We began to understand the simplicity of Torah and what it defines. Then only can we begin to understand the power of Torah. And I want to assure you, I will show us our labor and what is the result of it and why we are unsuccessful. I don't give a damn in what it is. Whether it's baking bread or mending clothing. Whether we that need to lose weight, you're not going to do it. You're going to always be unsuccessful because this is the principle of your mind. I will show you the one, one of the wisest men that spoke. And the Torah says he, he spoke by Mishol or Mish. Uh, Michelle or Michelle, 
Michelle, wisdom, proverbs that were hidden from the natural man. And he speaks so indelibly profound here in the book of Mishli, Proverbs. Hallelujah. This is our true spirit today. That's why we are not uh, having success and the door of success is not open to us. We're not successful. It says in Proverbs 24, verse 30, Did I not read in the book of Yeshua how that Yosef was very fruitful and Yisrael was fruitful? Did I not give us understanding of our scuffernogs and scuffernines? We did not prune them right. We are not labored on them right. So all the nutrients are going everywhere else. It is not going to the grapes. So you're not going to find the sweeter grapes and the most plumpest of grapes and the most fruitfulness of grapes. Here's the reason why. Proverbs. And this is something we never get. We look at others that think that that justifies us. We're so damn dumb and ignorant, we don't see the purpose uh, that even if our eyes open uh, to, the, to the malfeasance or the malpractices uh, or the weakness of others, uh, it is to reveal something in us. Yeah. And the wisdom of Shalomo speaks here in Proverbs 24 30. He said, I went by the feel uh, of an atzel, uh, of a slothful, uh, one that is sluggish and lazy as hell. Uh, I went by the feel, the vineyard. Is not our mind the feel that the wheat and the tear grow together? Is not our hearts the feel of the sowing of the Torah of Yah? He said, I went by mind. I went by a place whereby one does not react to Torah. One doesn't give a damn about Torah. One doesn't love Torah. I went by the feel of an cell, a lazy jackass of a man. He said, I went by the vineyard. Of a man void of understanding heart. In all of his success. It says Yosef. That Yah did he not add unto him wisdom. Did he not give him additives uh, to increase him. He said when I went by the house of this woman. This man. You can see that they were void of bina. They were void of discernment. And that judgment of others doesn't mean a damn thing. When they judge something, it has no damn validity. I'm not going to uh, let a weak, cowardly man assess me and judge me. I'm not going to let a filthy damn woman that is unclean with her mind and her mouth or house tell me anything when it comes to you. I don't give a damn who she is. I will, man. He said, I went by their vineyard. But a man that is void of understanding, of an understanding heart. He says in my eye and see, or behold, my eye was open. He says, uh, and it was all grown over with kimbashun. It was all grown over with thorns. That's why they hear the word of Yah. And then for a moment they get excited. They don't allow to correct it. Then the thorns and the thistle chokes it out. If you don't get the thorns out and the thistles, you will never succeed. You will never go through the door of success. You will never, Yisra'ya. Your mind will not, uh, your, your mind will not gravitate to the Torah of Yah. And there will be no love for Torah in your heart at all. Uh, hallelujah. He said, it was all grown over with thorns. Uh, and the nettles had covered the face thereof. Uh, and the stone wall. It was broken down. There was no defense. The minds are open to everything. The hearts are a vile because there is no defense. You don't find the chief cornerstone. Yeshua is not in the hearts. He said the stone that the builders rejected. See this man void of discernment. You bath void of discernment. You reject the stone. You reject truth. So the door to be open for you to be successful is never open. Then he says this. He said, then I saw and I considered it well or yata. It prospered me. That's what yata is. This is the form. It made me happy. It made me delight. For what reason? That you were better, Shalom? No, no. I'll show you why. 
He said, it made me yatta. It made me happy. It caused me to be excited. I was well glad. I got excited when I saw what I saw, Yisraya. He said, I considered it well. He said, I looked upon it. I looked upon it when I saw that. He said, I received. Does he say that? Does he say, I receive? I receive Musa. I receive discipline. This jackass generation. You can tell a man, man, look, you, you're not what you think you are. Well, I don't buy that preacher from you. He said, when I looked at that, I receive. So if you look at me and see the ears, do you receive? He said, I receive. He said, I receive Musa, I receive discipline, I receive counsel, I receive the rebuke, I receive the correction of you. We don't receive a damn thing. Now, ain't that way, preacher? Yo, you, you silly man. Men talk like that to me, I don't even, I, I say, okay, go ahead. I know they don't know what the book says. When a man's heart is pure, I don't care what one says, it's pure to them. When our heart's desire is to please y'all, I learned that as a young 24-year-old man, 25-year-old man. I learned that. And I've never forgotten it. I've never. By the hands of a man that I loved deeply and dearly, didn't even know what love was. But I learned so many things from him. That they still resonate, although he was ignorant of what he was saying. He taught me so many things. He said, I looked at them. See, a Jezebel spirit would say, well, oh, they're not successful. They're not doing right, but I'm doing right. Jezebel, you're not successful. He said, I looked at all that and I receive. Can I read that again? He uses the word, I consider it a yatab, I consider it as success. I'm successful to understand, to see what is here. He says, and I looked at it, I, I saw this. He said, I looked upon it and I receive instruction. I receive musa, I receive discipline, I receive correction, I receive chastisement. We don't do that. We don't do that. We don't consider what we see to receive instructions. That's why we're not successful. That's why Ephraim said, uh, he said, in all of my life, tell me where I stood seeing a lot of my sin against you. Yeah. You do it against the least among them. To you, that one is least among you. That's why you consider him and her the way you do because they're least. They don't mean a damn thing to you. You will go to hell. I like the way this man talks. I like to hear him. I'd rather hear you than me. Thinking about him this morning, I said, you got to get busy, my friend. Feed us a little bread. Whatever you see, my friend, you should receive Musa. You should receive counsel. Chastisement, correction. That's how success comes. Can I proceed, my Zachim? I shall. He said, I consider when I saw all that, yet he uses the words mu'at. Just not much. It is the literal, the mu'at leaven, that leavens the whole. You don't need pound of yeast for bread for it to rise just a little bit it doesn't take much for you to rise up in the indignation in the indignance indignancy of your own wickedness does it talk to me it doesn't take much for you to show your corruption you talk to your children any kind of way you talk to your wife any kind of way you talk to your husband any kind of way you talk to your friends any kind of way the grotesque disfigurement of your face, what's in your damn heart is expressed right here. We're not successful. We are unsuccessful. He said just a little of me out. See, it doesn't take much. He says just a little. I'm going to break it down, don't worry. 
He said, just a little uh, a me at of Shinach. Uh, we get sleep in Yah's house. In hell, we sleep all the time. Just a little sleep. Doesn't take much. Those that sleep, they sleep in the night. We are the children of the day. We should be awakened. And we are asleep. We should not be sleeping in the daytime. We should be awake. Our eye, should, our eye and our spiritual perception and, and depth should be open. We're not going to progress. We're not going to succeed. See, we think, well, I, I just got three hours of sleep today. Uh, did you did? You laid on your arse for three hours of sleep? You look for opportunities to sleep? You know what? I say to all you bath that is on here, I don't give y'all get upset with me. I was looking at the other day, I said, you know, out there working, laying those blocks. I said, you know what? Every bath around here, here, they should be able to, you know, to refine their attitude and their physical being. They, I, I said, you know what? If I had the time they had, I would be a physical specimen. I work out twice a day, man. Because I know the labor is not going to be that challenging during the course of the day. I get up early in the morning. I hit the gym. Then I go back that evening. I don't care if y'all get upset with me now. Yeah. That I hit it again. I, I even do that now. And I do that every day. Oh, y'all get quiet because I tell you yeah. the truth. Yeah. That's why just a little, well, I, I, I'm not going to do this today. I'm going to do it tomorrow. Just a little. Just a little. It doesn't take much. And you discourage yourself. It's not someone discouraging you. You are doing it because your damn flesh hates you. It's greedy, it's lustful, it doesn't give a damn about you. Your own flesh. It's not that someone hates you, it's you hating you. I love me. I love me a whole lot. I love me, man. I love me a lot. I love me. I'm not going to, not I am, I'm not going to do anything to hurt me. Above all spiritually. You see what it says, just me, uh, just a little. We don't do this, just a little, just a little, just a little bit. That is not even measurable. He said, yet a little sleep. And a little, ten um, just a little slumbering. He says, he used the word hebuch. He talks about the falling of hand. You know what hebuch is? Just a little falling hand. You're so damn idle that you're bored. You're so damn idle that you're bored. You look at anyone what the world calls success. They work, they probably get by on four or five hours of sleep, if that. Three hours. I don't care what you do or what you try to accomplish. For you to have success in that, you're going to have to give up something, honey. Hallelujah. Hell, we're not going to lose weight if we don't give up this greedy nature that we have and this greed. And we are so incest with food. We're not going to lose that. We're not going to get healthy. And that's just a fuck. Yeah. I don't care if you get upset. It's just a fuck. We need to deal with that. Uh, because that is how we are. Our light shine. Yeah. You think when people see us, they're looking at some spiritual body. They're looking at the whole of us. What we are. Who we are. That's what they're looking at. Yeah. Just a little idleness. As the old folks will say, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. It doesn't take but a little bit. You know what? Me, oh, they're just a little, just a. I was saying to Oxymion, he was making this colloidal silver. He says, uh, he says to me, just you got to put some kind of sugar, fructose, or, you know, sucrose. And I said, man, c come on, Ak. I, I said, that's gonna. Don't you think that's gonna bring an imbalance to the composition? I said, it doesn't take much. If you take sulfur and change it from one form to the other, it changes the dynamics of that. I say, that, that doesn't sound. I say, man, you, you just can't believe everything you read. He said, no, 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 no. He said, the amount is so nil. He said, you take a toothpick and you dip it in there, a little honey, just a toothpick. He said, just on the head of the toothpick and you put that. I say, okay. You tell me that changes the dynamic and the characteristic to a point that it creates a kind of uh, uh, metabolism in that, that it creates the whole, uh, to create the whole substance of that. He said, that's all. 
And then he began to explain to me. He said, okay, man, I, I got it now. Okay, because I'm thinking now you're using that sugar, man. It can't be right. So just a little, and that little of just on the tip of the toothpick changed the whole dynamic. Don't you know just a me out a little idleness of your mind changed the whole characteristic of your dimension? Just a little. Just a little. It doesn't take much. Just a little folly. Just a little jobbing and clowning in life. Just a little. Just a little idleness. Just a tad. It's a just a little idleness or a hip book of the hands to sleep. Then it says social poverty or risha, social poverty, come upon one that travails. And then this is what happens. And you want, as an armed man, you become so greedy, you become so lustful, you'll do anything for anything that you're desiring. That's why an armed man goes out and rob. You'll lie, you'll cheat, you'll steal, you'll do anything because of the little that you do. He said, my labor, Ephraim, it has been great. It has not been a labor of Ovin. We should get up awake in the morning of your grandsons, and the first thing we do is sweep the house. We get up moody as hell and dumb as hell. Talk to me, Yisraya. First thing you do is sweep the house. It's just like the process of a, of a mother, an imma. She gets up, makes sure that everyone up, and then she cleans the house. That's the process. And when a mother does that, she will see what it does. Uh, it begins to invigorate her, begins to bring life in her. But you don't do that, you're going to become, uh, you're going to become uh, lazy and wicked as they come, uh, Yisraya. There's nothing more vile, I'm telling you, Yisraya, that an unclean woman, uh, one that is foul in a house, uh, is unclean. There's nothing that stinks like that. I don't care you bath, I don't care you get mad at me. When a woman doesn't keep a house clean, she's not clean. I don't give a damn who you are. You're, you're not clean. Clean your house. I don't give a damn how much perfume you put on. It was one thing I never liked doing. Back in the days, you know, we would wear each other's clothes. I didn't like wearing it. If I didn't have it, I didn't have it. And so women would borrow this from that one or this one. And then this one already got her funk under it. And the other one got her funk under it. And then she sprays on cologne. She smells like a funky chicken. I would wear the same thing over and over. It made me no different. As long as it was clean. When I was in high school, I washed my clothing by hand. I kept shoe polish. I kept my shoes spotless. I washed my clothing by hand to make sure that all things they were clean. Mama didn't do it for me. I did it myself. My shoes were always polished and highly illuminated. Didn't have a one pair of Chuck Taylors, but I took care of them and I nurtured them and made sure they were clean. And then when I would hustle back then, my Emma, you could go to family dollars. Back then it was nothing over three dollars. You take a 20 spot, you had to be careful with those blue jeans though. You got something, you just couldn't wash it. So I was careful how I wore it. And so when I got home, I would make sure I take it off and hang it up and make sure, ah, get another way out of that. Hang my britches up and keep it clean. You both said, no, I'm that way today. I want a clean heart. That should be the desire of Yisraya. Create me a clean heart. And renew the straight Yasha, the right. See, when you get straight with Yah, you can get straight with Yisraya. Hallelujah. So shall poverty come as one that travails? And you're going to always want. I don't care what you do. You're going to always want something.
I want that. I want this. I want that. As an armed man, you, as they would say, you rob Peter to pay Paul. You're always wanting something. You always got to have something. That's not success. A man that's successful, he doesn't want anything because he can't get anything. And when we have the success of Yah, we have no need of want. All that we need is in Yahshua Hamashiach. He supplies all that we need. Everything we need, the riches of Yah, we have all of that. Is that because you got diamond rings and leaning in against the Cadillac? That doesn't make one successful. Huh? We're talking about a success that, be, that extends beyond the, 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 the monetary and the physical observation. We talk about something in a man's mind and a woman's mind that with their voices, like when they speak like a Ruth or a Judith or a Susiana, that their voice resonates with such beauty that even men are taken by the awesomeness of their voice. Yeah. You hear the women today, they talk as full of laughter and folly in this damn false pretense. I'm not taking it back. And the foolish men are so juvenile uh, and they have no power of the strength of this own of God, this vigor. They don't have a damn thing to say. This is why we're not successful. Well, just one more little cookie. Just a little extra. Just a little more. Just a little slice of pound cake. And things you got to deny. I hate the false one that pretend they don't eat like that and they know damn well. I love pound cake. I love is that amazing while my Zachin preaching. The word in rich and blessed many last night. Received an email this morning. I'm talking about fried fish. I said, Mama. There's nothing like a nice bass. You sip your caught one other night. I said, oh man, fillet that bad boy. Just, I would have fried the bones and all. I said, I want a piece about that thick. She said, oh. I said, oh, it's not meat unless it's that thick. I don't want nothing that thin. I don't want no bass that thin. I want a piece that thick. Fat and meaty. I said, all that white meat and I want to fry it in some house of Audrey all that seasoning and all that plumbing eats and that that's what I want you understand but I know that if I yielded to my will and my desire I'd be in bad shape and I love me too much yeah. and so when it comes time for me to have a piece it's not going to be a piece that thin it's going to be a piece like that Stick it out. Fry it. I don't want it bake. And so just a little. It's not the much. We think it's the, the abundance. It's the little that you do. Those little things that you don't consider. It's the little things that you don't consider about you. He said, I went by the field and I consider and I saw and it rebuked me. Whatever you see in your achim, your achim, that should rebuke you. Show you what you're lacking. But that's not how we do it. That's a successful mind. That's one that is walking in the success of Yah's Torah. That's one that is successful in the wisdom of Yah. Oh, that didn't mean that he didn't point it out. He realized that all it takes is a little falling of hand. A little rejecting that, denying that, and say, I'll let this go by. Have you ever done that? I'll let this go by until tomorrow, get it. Then tomorrow goes by the next week and the next month and it's still there. Last time I cleaned up my little private space, it took me two hours and a half. It wasn't dirty. It was just that I have things neatly appalled here. I got something here and I got something there. I got it here and I got it there. So I went through the whole thing throughout this, got rid of that, refined that. And as I, this is how I clean. As I go, I clean three or four feet, and I mop, and I look at that, and say, ah. And then I do three or four more feet until I finish. That's how I do it. Oh, I don't clean up one thing at one time. I incremental. I go just a little at a time. Room get the smelling nice, and 
Ah, the air becomes fresh. You need to clean the house of your mind. You got to do it one step at a time. And it begins with you. And then when it begins, then you're going to see the success of your fruitfulness uh, and the power of his, uh, his, his knowledge revealed in you. It is not you. It is our obedience unto him that brings success. Uh, and Shirak points that out. I want to read this quickly. Shirak 10.4. Shirak 10.4. Shirak 10.4. The hand of Almighty Yah. It says in Shirak 10.4, it talks about the government. The government and power of the earth uh, is in the hands of Yah. Do you hear that? Mr. Obama is in the hands of Yah. Mr. Putin is in the hands of Yah. Mr. Brown is in the hands of Yah. He said the government, the government and the power of the earth is in the hands of Yah. And over it he will raise up and set the right man for the time. Mr. Obama is the right man for this time. Yah raised him up. Ain't nobody to the president of the United States. Come from a house broken. He was born before mom and daddy was married. He came from a white gal and a black boy, an African. That is not a measure of prestige in this world, especially in this damn wicked nation. Say what you want to, but still the truth. Daddy was so inspired by the daughter, he named her Sammy. He wanted a boy. Gives his daughter a boy's name. And he didn't like them darky skinny dippers either. See, y'all raise them up. I don't know what he called trash. He calls himself a bastard, a mutt. He said, I'm a mutt. You should have seen how quiet the, quiet the crowd got. Oh, don't say that. Well, that's what you're calling him anyway. You got a little mutt. He mutt. He said that. I didn't say it. Ya brak you for me, Sibrak Hussein Obama. I'm not going to pray him out of power. I'm not going to pray against him. I'm going to pray that I can live quiet and full of shalom in this earth. Bless him. And over it, he will raise up the right man for the right time. Then the next verse he says, he uses the word here, he uses the word here in the word of Selach. He said the right man at the right time, he uses the word Selach. One that shall have success, one that shall be prosperous and have the greatness of the riches of Yah's knowledge. He says the success of a man is in the hand of Almighty Yahweh. Now, not what T.D. Jakes tell you you can be successful. The success, the prospering, the maturity, the wisdom of a man is in the hand of Yah. And Yah does this and he confers his honor upon the person of the stride. That's who Yah prefers his honor upon, he gives honor upon those that write and rightly divide Torah. So the success of any man is in the hand of Yah. The success of any man, so he has given this delusion of what we think the success is. What they call big homes, what they think fine cars is stupid. Diamond rings and suits and you can go and get your belly sucked, get your titties pumped up. Men changing their dimension from a man to a woman, they call that success. That's not success. That's why Jacob, by his strength, because he had power with Yah, he could say to Esau, no, you're not coming out. You're not going to have the right of birth. I am the progeneration of the success of Yah among his nation. And in me shall all Israel, the nations of the earth, the blessings that were sealed upon Abraham and our father, they shall be in the power of this image. I shall be known as the one that prevailed even against you. We're not prevailing against any damn thing. 
We're not prevailing against our own flesh, our own will, our own sin, our own corruption. We have no success. And we need to get back to the oracles and the principles of Almighty God. We don't have long. I was looking this morning, my precious Zachary. So this woman, she didn't look that old. I just kind of scanned through the picture where because I'm turning pages. So, wow, she seemed quite young. Maybe a younger picture of her, 72 years old, dead. And I'm thinking, yeah, if I live, whoa, that's not long. For me, 72 years old, that's, whew, that's not long. Little Sipora will just be ready to, huh, I don't know, she may be, for a husband. These babies, the one that she shall birth soon, still be a little one, child. So that's not long. We don't deal with the reality of what is real. You're going to die. I would always think in my family I would be the first to die. I would. I don't know why I was silly like that. Because I always had the sense I was so much more unworthy than all of my other brothers and my only sister. I said I would be the first one. I'll die young, I believe, probably in my 30s. That's how silly I thought as a young lad. I always knew that I would be the first one to die. I don't know, I may be the last one to die. Who knows? I don't have no problem with that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it is the success, the success of a man is in the hand of Yah. So you tell me what the world calls success is success? Women lying with women and men with men and they call themselves successful and the world say that they are successful? You tell me that's success? You tell me that's the success of Yah? In order for us to begin to understand of that tremendous veil is open unto us, we must begin to do one thing that we must begin to seek. Yeah. We have to Yisra'ya. Yeah. We must begin to do that. And not only that, Yisra'ya, we're in this time. I know it's kind of difficult for us to believe, but those that are successful, in this hour of this evil day, they will keep quiet. We don't believe that. Because we don't know the book. We don't read at all. We're full of pretense. Well, can I read? You will believe the Nobi Amos, right? Amos. Let's go there quickly to Amos chapter 5. I want to move quickly here, all right? Hallelujah. The book of Amos chapter 5, <clears throat> verse 12. Moving quickly. Yah says to us by the mouth of the prophet, For I know your many, the abundance of your transgression, your facial, your rebellionness against me. He says, and I know your mighty sins. I know the activities of your mind. You can't hide the activities of your mind from Yah. He says, and you also afflict the just, those that are straight, Sadiq. You're always afflicting them with your attitude, your spirit, with your wickedness. He said, uh, you take bribes or you take the kufa, you take the bribes of the wicked. Uh, and you turn aside the needy at the gate uh, from their right. And those that are in need of your assistance, those that are in need of your companionship, you turn them aside because uh, you are just that corrupt. He's talking to the Kohan. He's talking to us as a nation, Yisrael. He said, therefore, therefore. You see today, men that believe that they are prudent and wise, and men that believe that they have seceded, and Yah uses the word sakal, sakal, those that, uh, those that are wise and have the wisdom of Yah, they have insight, they have the knowledge of Yah. He says, therefore the prudent, because you read the verse before that, he said, therefore the prudent shall keep silent in that time, for it is an evil time. So the wise men will keep quiet. You got every man today want to talk, don't you? Sure you do. And they think they're wise. But a prudent man, he'll keep quiet. He says, oh, yeah. Mm. Because just like Shalomo, when he considered the vineyard, 
the thorns and the thistles? He said, uh, that was my correction. He should have held fast to that. That's why he messed up. Listen to this, the prudent man or the sakhal, those that have insight and comprehension of knowledge of Torah, shall keep silence in that time, for it is an evil time. But listen to for us. Yah says, I want you to darash, I want you to seek. I want you to resort to the Torah. I want you to meditate in the Torah. Do we meditate in Torah? Be honest with yourself. You don't have to make no expression, just answer it. He said, I want you to seek. I want you to frequent the Torah. I want you to apply the principles. I want you to have a love affair with the Torah. I want you to inquire. I want you to care for what Torah says. Dorash. Seek, Ya says. I want you to seek tough, that which is excellent. Seek shalom. Seek the excellence of your neighbor, your rabbi. Your, your friend. He says, seek tough and not evil. Don't seek the things that are evil. Don't set your mind on the things that are full of ra. Why? That you may live. Who wants to live? Hallelujah. I want to live. He said that you may live. And then he says this, listen. And so Yah, the sovereign master of hosts, he shall be with you as you have spoken. He tells us to hate evil, the evil thoughts of your mind, the evilness of your conscience. He says, and love tough. In order for you to do that, you must establish mishpat, judgment, at the shaha, at the gate. You must establish that in the gate of your mind, in the entrance of your thought. You must establish judgment at the gate. Why? It may be that Yah, the sovereign one of hosts, Savah, will be Hanun. Kind to the remnant of Yosef, that he may be kind. He tells us that the prudent man, the man that is successful, he says, comes a time when that man, when that wealth, he will keep silence because the time is evil. The success of that man, he will not flaunt it. And everyone today wants to flaunt the ignorance of their unlearned ability when it comes to Torah. They've not sought Yah. When a man seeks Yah, he doesn't operate in the same spirit day in and day out. He's not the same today like he was yesterday. And every day gets better and better and better. As the evangelist Hartsfield said one day, it gets gooder and gooder and gooder. And of course, old Wayne Proctor thought he was eloquent in his speech. And uh, he says, there is no word as gooder and gooder. Well, he says, I tell you what, although it gets better, it gets gooder and gooder and gooder and gooder. How about that? I remember those things because I learned so much. You're not going to never learn anything in life unless you learn how to listen and receive. A fool cannot hear anyone. He doesn't even hear himself talk. We're in the time whereby even those that are successful will not speak. You think that everyone is telling you how they made their money and how to get rich? Bill Gates doesn't give a damn about telling you how to get rich. Mr. Warren Buffett, if you pay $200,000, you can have dinner with him and sit with him and then he can give you a few secrets. Mr. Warren Buffett, his stocks of uh, Berkshire, they run, they, they run about uh, uh, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 per share. $30,000 a share. You think... Someone poor like you, you think someone they call themselves successful? How many folks are successful? Do you understand how many what they call millionaires in this country of over 300 million people? They're only about 15 million, 20 at the max. So you're not successful in this country unless perceived in the eyes of the world, unless you're in the upper crescent of the plateau. And that's a fact. You got a $200,000 a year job. You, you, you're not successful. You got a house that's taking two and a half of your paychecks a month. Sure you are. You're not going to live uh, making that kind of money in no uh, $75,000 house. I want to move on, Mama, because I want to finish, all right? I got some more to go. Success. How to enter the gate, the doors. 
that we as a nation can walk in the mindset of success. We can be successful. Hallelujah. 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 I want to read this. Here's the word in the, in the, in the writings of Micaiah. I am always searching Torah diligently. And the prophet speaks in the sixth chapter. And he lets us know that, listen, Yisrael, I want you all to hear me. The only way that the warning of Yah is going to come, this is what this Nobi Mikhaya speaks of, is going to come by a man that has success, that Yah has added unto him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. A man's wisdom will make his face to light and to shine. When a man is wise, you will see the light of his face. You will see a beauty in his eyes. When a bath of Zion is, is wise, you will see it. Even the world will see it. That's why they all love Yosef. They all had love in their heart for him because of his wisdom that spoke. His understanding of Torah is spoke with great volume. And in the hour that we are in, as Amos prophesied, and he spoke concerning those that are successful, Yah will say to them, shut your damn mouth. And yet he says, uh, the only way that any kind of warning of wisdom shall come to a nation is by one that has succeeded in the way of Yah. And he gives us an account here in the book of Micaiah, uh, Micah, Michael. And he uses the word, uh, he uses this word, Tushiyah, Tushiyah. And one that has succeeded in the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding of Yah, one that has success, one that is sound in the teaching, one that is sound in the knowledge of the Torah, one that is efficient with effectiveness in the order of how one uses and speaks the word of Almighty Yah. Micaiah, chapter 6, verse 9. He says here that Yah's voice cries to the city. And then he tells us here, and the man of Tushi, of wisdom, the man of wisdom, the man of wisdom, not the men, but the man of wisdom, the true man that has the essence of the head of Yahshua in him, the man of wisdom shall see your name. See, only that man can see the dynamics of the power of Yah. Yah raises up all leaders, all men. He gives them success. He said, that man shall see your name. And this is what he shall do. It says, he shall shemach. He shall listen for the matta, for the rod. Isn't that what Shalomo did in Mishli? He listened for the chastising. He said, I consider all this and whoa, the instructions were for me. Do we receive the instructions as to what things we perceive we see? He said, when I saw that, he said, he listened, he guarded his mind to hear the rod uh, and to the one who has appointed this. He has appointed death for us, hasn't he? Yet, even for Yisrael, there is success in death. Precious in the sight of Yah is the death of all of his crucial. He has appointed it. Hear this, Yisrael. And there is yet the treasure of wickedness in the house of the wicked. Is there not a treasure when one has a trove of wickedness? They eat wickedness. They awake wicked. They awaken with that wickedness. There's a great wealth of wickedness in the house of the wicked again we go back to the mi'at the little what Shalomo spoke in Mishli and he says here in the latter part of this verse he said and the scant measure there it is abominable to Ibah see the scant measure what is the scant it's just a little small bit isn't it it is almost untraceable you don't need a lot of sign on to kill someone you can dip that little bit in a toothpick, 
It doesn't even have to absorb. You can take cyanide and put it on your clothes. It will kill you. You don't have to ingest it. It's just the scant measure of that which is abominable. To Aba, a filthy mind, a mind that will not be corralled by the wisdom of Torah that operates in one of the most vilest of arenas. That one can never move beyond the grounds and the plateau where they are. When you cannot move beyond the place that you were a year ago and two years far, something is sick in your damn mind man woman you are twisted you are a sick creature go who you are you're sick hear this shall I count them pure with the wicked balance and with a bag of deceit, where's the man of Tushia? The man that has success. He's successful. Where is that man? Where are the men that are successful? Should I count them pure with wicked balance and with bag of deceit for Nirema? Wait. For the rich man, that's a successful man. That's what T.D. Jakes tell you. You ought to be rich and bitty him. For the rich man thereof, those are the successful ones. This is what is in our mind. This is success. For the rich man thereof are full of violence. And the inhabitants thereof have spoken lies. We don't speak lies. We don't do that. And he said, and their tongue, their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. Therefore... You see, we are all sick. Therefore, also, will I make you halal? I will make you sick. We are weak when it comes to operating in Yah's success. We are weak when it comes to meditating upon the Torah. We are weak when it's time to pray. We are weak when it's time to, to, to corral our flesh and sub subdue it uh, and bind it and to kill it, that it rises not up against Yah. That's not success. I want to go back and read that according to this adjective. Hear this, what it means. Success, it is to have favorable attention. It's profitable. You are fruitful. You are happy. You are prosperous. And you are strong, wealthy. You prosper in the things of Yah, in the ways of His truth. You're strong when a man is happy. You can't see when a man is happy, when a man is wealthy. You can't say what you want to. But a wealthy individual, they don't look like a poor one. Their skin doesn't. Their teeth don't. I don't care what their teeth are. It doesn't look like a poor man. Their skin doesn't look like that. And we have the wealth of the riches of Torah. So we should not look like every other man. As I taught us on the Khatve Imata, it says that the kindness of the gentleness of a man's wife or last Shabbat, it, that man is like no other man. And you don't realize, Beth, it is on the great wealth that Yah has put in you. You want to be silly as hell. You want to rise up and you think you're bodacious and bona fide. You're not that. You want to lose the inheritance of your damn birthright. It is the beauty that Yah placed upon you to give resolve and strength to the man. And you don't give a damn about it uh, and you weak back man what you are have no character of the head of your Shua Hamashiach you console the wickedness uh, you indulge in their damn folly and their stupidity it's wrong it's wrong it's wrong you correct it I don't mind correcting no one I spend more time on me than I spend with any man correcting me. You're a wicked thing, man. You vile child of hell. You don't talk to you like that. I talk to me like that all, all the time. That's the truth. You will never be successful in anything unless you apply much. A little is going to bring death. It's not going to bring about anything. We were in the gym the other day with Shimbri and Yusipi. I was waiting for my friend to come. And we watching 
Akshim Bri here. And I said, ouch, I'm not going to try to do that. And this strength of success, he didn't get there by just not taking steps at a time. I don't care what it is, when it comes to refining and beautifying with the body of Yeshua HaMashiach, we can't do it. As the old woman say, baby, you got to take a little baby step. You got to truly take the step. The reason we don't come that we don't take the step in the direction that Yah commands us. We don't get control over me. We don't do that. We will not do that. And so we see someone else do that, we, we're critical. When I see someone doing things that motivate me, I'm telling you, I don't need no motivation for nothing. I honestly don't. I don't need no motivation to work. I don't need no motivation to love me. I don't need that. I'm just being honest with you. But what I see others do, it just motivates me. I feel nice. Oh, he did that. Boy, look at that. Man, that's, that's raw there. Look at that, Yosip. Look at that bona fide raw from the gut. Mm, man. I don't get in sense and envious. I'm not going to hurt me like that. I'm glad I was never that way. I'm glad I've never been that way. I don't care what no, I've never been that way. I've never been offended of a man's beauty or his gift. If anything, I would say, man, that's, I like that man. How you doing? I would say, man, you, you got that right. I'm going to finish in a moment. I remember that was a basketball player. We went, he played basketball for South Mecklenburg. I played the two position for Olympic High School. Lumassi, he went on to play for UNC Charlotte. He went on to play in the final four of the NCAA. And it was one thing that we all, we knew each other because we played basketball and he was always the same. And uh, he got drafted by the Cleveland Cavaliers. He panned out for two years. And then he went overseas to Europe and played basketball. And it was many years after that I saw Lou Massey. And I read some time back he had had a leg amputated because of diabetes. And uh, he went over and then when I saw him again, it was many years, he was driving this the world would say this fabulous white Mercedes Benz. His wife was an Indian woman. She was a doctor. And so when he saw me, it wasn't the Mercedes Benz that said to me, or he said to me, I've arrived. Like, they rob us. Hey, man, what's up, man? Come on. And so there were many years past. And I was at the hot hole one day, fishing. Early in the morning, they bite when you go in the morning, cold too. And I saw this man, and of course I'm inquisitive. I said, man, I know you. I said, I know you, man. His teeth were missing. I said, Lou? He said, yeah, I'm Lou, man, Lou Massey. You probably don't remember me. Dave Robert, they mad. And as we began to dialogue, all those riches he had, they were gone. But to the world, he was successful. He showed me more gravity and more strength than any man. It made me respect him even more. His honesty. He said, says to me, he says, uh, he, I said, what are you doing now, man? He says, uh, he says, uh, I'm a plumber. I do plumbing work. And these are his words that I'm going to say. I don't care if it's offensive to you. This is what he said. He says, I'm just, quote, I'm just a piece of a shit, no good plumber, unquote. After all of that I have ascertained, it has no value. The riches, the monies, 
course, back then in those years, he, he, he got drafted in the first round, so he was making around five, six hundred thousand dollars a year. He had a lot of money. But his honesty, not because he said that, it was just his honesty. I said, Lou, give me your telephone. Come on, man. I, I fish all the time. He said, I, he said, I can't fish. I'm down here with my boy. We're just fishing. We don't want to say that what we are. We don't want to challenge ourselves that way. Man, I could have grabbed the man's neck and said, man, this, not because he was in that position. I didn't gloat in that. Because when he saw me rising to his pinnacle, he did not shine away like some, what's up, baby? I don't know you. You're looking for something. He didn't do that. He was still Lou Massey. He was still the same. He always the same. We're just like a beast. We change with our tactics. Listen to this. In verse 13, quickly. Yah says, therefore also I will make you chala. I will make you sick. I will make you weak. You become diseased. You will become so weak you will have no strength. You will be sorrowful. He said, I'm going to make them weak. And smiting you. He said, and make you desolate because of your sin. I'm going to make you empty. You're going to look dark. Your face is going to look dark. Your mind is going to be other places. It's not going to be, on the, come on, how, how, many, how many folks, how, how many of you that are listening that your mind is grasping this? How many of you that are sitting here? We have a small crowd here, right? It's more you that are listening than here, right? Hallelujah. This is what he says, Yisrael. He says, uh, he says uh, and it's, it's your own sins uh, that have made you desolate because of your wickedness. He said, yet the man of wisdom, in, in, in verse 9, he said, the man of Tushi, uh, the man that is wise, uh, he's sound, the man that has success, uh, he has, uh, has knowledge uh, uh, of the success of Yah. He is the only one that will listen for the sound of the warning. You know, the doctors will tell you there are warning signs before that happened. You have warning signs. Yes, they do. Oh, that should have been a warning sign when you had that. Even Chirac talks about the doctor. He says, uh, in order for the doctor to be successful, he prays that the young doctor may be uh, a restoration to one. That's a true doctor that knows young. Uh, these were the Hippocratic oaths. That's what he says. And that's just the truth, Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. I'm always drawn by the passion of this verse in Yachahan, 3 John. It's one thing that we must understand, the wealth of Yah's wisdom and the wealth of his uh, own. His success must be seen in us. First, third John, chapter 1, verse 2, he calls his Geisha, he calls him beloved. He said, my passion, my pleasure, my hafiz above all things uh, is that you may own, that you may prosper, that you may be vigorous, you may have the strength of health, you may have the ability, the strength, uh, the assurance, you may have substance as well. Uh, he said that you may prosper and be in rafa or the morphe hell, even as your nefesh. Uh, he used the word selach. Selach, selach, even as your nephesh, your being, your substance, your life, as it shows prosperity, as it shows success, as it shows the successful nature of the power of the word of Yah. There's no way that when we hear the words, uh, we, we don't progress. There's no way I can talk and speak like this without engaging in the Torah of Yah. As well, many cannot talk like this. You often gauge uh, when your body is weary and tired, you still must. You must rise up, uh, get up, yeah. lay by in the Torah. Yeah. You don't get this by shining this book. Yeah. This doesn't come by writing out no sermon. I don't have no sermon that year. I have scripture that I can find them quickly and tell you what to turn. I don't need notes. Say this next and that next. It's 
damn falseness among Israel, yeah, we're not seceding. We're not walking successfully through the door of his wisdom and his knowledge. And you old silly foolish men, you're going to pay the price. Those oh, stupid silly men, immature. I will, man. You smooth. You ain't smooth with a damn. You're holding nothing but flap and silly old men. I hate that. Then the stench of that is silly old women, immature. Hell, you wonder why young ones have nothing to grasp and to grab hold of. I'm strong. You're not strong, man. You're weak. I'm not strong like that young man. These young men, they're strong. A strong man. I'm talking about physically. My strength is mature strength. So, I can't do like that one. What he's impressed with, mature strength. Look at that. You're my friend, Yisrael. I want you to be successful. I want you to have the wealth of Yah, the wisdom of his strength in all things in your sure mighty name. In my searching in Torah, I, I'm always looking at words. I may look at a word hundreds of times through different variums of scripture, trying to find its precept of that connection. You can't get things from Yah without expending oneself. And then when I find it, I'm, I, I can rest then. It may take me an hour, two, three. It may take me days. It may take me a week. And there's, as one would say, the light goes off. That's it right there. That one verse sums it all up. I want to read this quickly, what Yoshua says to us. In Lucas chapter 10, verse 19, this is what he says to us. Hallelujah. And I want to read from Shirak in one verse that I'm going to close here, but I want to read this quickly. Yoshua says this, Salmadem. He says here, I've seen this word often. But never knew that it was the power of the words on success to be successful. He says in Lucas 10, 19, he says, Behold, only I give you koach, power, I give you strength, I give you might. To, and he uses the word trad, to be successful, to have success, to do it with success. To do with own, with vigor, with wealth, uh, with the ability, the power, the strength, the Torah. He said, I give you power, I give you power to be successful. Against all serpents, against the powers of the shadim of demons. Uh, and he said, over all power of your enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Sticks and stone may talk, may hurt, but... Talk, sticks and stones may break your bones, but talk will never. See, I had to dig, and, and I sat there. I will work a little bit and come in yesterday out of the rain and, and take 15, 20 minutes, search a little bit. And I go back and, to my little suchatz and work a little bit and sweaty and musty and come back and sit down 20 minutes. I say, okay, I got it's 20, it's, it's 10 after I'll go back at this time on the, on the half hour. Sitting and sitting until yesterday evening, sitting down, and Jacqueline comes in and sit down some more, and, and did a little ironing and sit down some more, and all of a sudden, there it is right there. He gives us success. He gives us that power. That power comes from Yah, and no one else. It comes from Yah. We will not have it. I want to close with this last verse. As my Zakin would say, there's more. I want to show you the power of success. It's so simple. I'm glad Zakin Yaramaya Zakin with me. You Achin. I'm glad, my friend. I'm glad it doesn't take much. Can I read it to us? It's written by our precious Achin, our precious Ach Yaakov, the book of James. One verse here. 
James chapter 2, verse 8. James 2 and 8. He says this to us, Yisrael. You know, people will say, when people have success, they say they own, they, they're done well. Isn't that the phrase? So in my research to understand the dynamics of the word success, it brought me to that dimension of doing well. I said, oh, yeah, that's, that's it. We do well in him. And this is what Jacob says. If you fulfill, if you obey the royal Torah, the right, according to the Katu, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You shall have success. You shall do well. People say, oh, she's doing well. She's successful. She has done so well. You've never heard that phraseology? So if you do that, Yisra'ya, you shall have success. That's the royal command. We love Yisra'ya. We shall have success. We shall. One more thing I want to read for us. Can I read it? Turn quickly to Yahushua. Hallelujah. Joshua ben Nun. Joshua chapter 1. This is a promise to you for all time. Joshua 1 verse 8. It says, and this is how we're going to have success. He said, this stroll of the Torah shall not depart or Mush, cease, there should not be no cessation, be removed out of your mouth. He tells us, we shall chaga, we shall meditate. When you chaga, you study. That's what meditate is, chaga. You study the Torah. You listen to the Torah. You meditate on the Torah. You utter the Torah. You speak what Torah says. He said, therein, day and night, we're guilty. We're guilty of this. We are guilty. This is not our approach. He said that you may, while we must meditate on this day and night, that we may observe to do all according to that is written therein. We must do all that is written therein. He says, for then, when we do that, shall you make your way, shalach. you shall make it prosperous. You shall make your way successful. You shall bring or cause yourself to walk in success. You shall be successful. He said, you shall make your way as your safe did. He made his way to be prosperous, to be successful. He said, you shall make your way successful. And then shall you have tav. The only place you should have excellent success. Sakhal. You're going to have excellent success. So that's the royal law of Torah. To love our neighbors. To love Yah. Which hence... All of his truth. May the riches of God rest upon you. May his strength purge your heart and your mind that you may walk in the depth of his wisdom, his truth. My prayer is that you raise up the messengers, the true men of Yah, that they stand with great sincerity in Yahshua's mighty name, that the messengers, the young men, in the development to be strong. I'm not here to try to, to uh, cast down anyone. I'm here to throw down your sins and your wickedness but to build up the young men of strength and the bath of Tizai so their beauty will shine like an excellent light. And when they go places, people not worry about how tight your dress is on your ass. Yeah. Or you got on Leslie Faye shoes. Hallelujah. I know sometimes y'all think I'm boasting, but I'm not. I watch even on Thursday how the women would. I, I, I'm looking at my ish, y'all, that she's got on Walmart material and how beautiful you're so beautiful. Oh, you're so, you're pretty woman. Give a damn if your head's down to your eyes. It doesn't make a damn difference. The women that got it down there and they're still ugly and hideous looking. You dress yourself in the ruach. You dress yourself in wisdom. Dress yourself in the kindness of Yah. That's what you do. Or you always say that because it always happens. I'm just being honest. I watch it all the time. And so when they see her, they look at me like, okay. Hmm. And that's just the truth. So you don't have to do what the world does. We are beautiful people. We just let the wisdom of Yah shine and walk in that beauty. We are very beautiful people. Very beautiful. There's no people more beautiful. The same way if you apply this principle to everything. There's nothing, as we would say, there's nothing too hard for Almighty Yah. Come on, when we, we get our minds right, 
even in the natural things, we can do it with great success. And that is the success of Yah that we walk in his Torah. May Yah enrich you all. Come on, my Zakain. May his strength rest upon the bosom of Yisrael, his nation, his people. And may we all delight in the power of the riches of Torah. Tov success. Hallelujah. We, see, we can achieve that, Yisrael. Yahshua HaMashiach, all that he did was successful. Hallelujah. He had laid the path out for us, Yisrael, so straight that it would not be hard. Hallelujah. It's our sin and it's our iniquity. That makes it hard for us, Yisrael. So we need to lay down those things that cause us to transgress against the Torah of Yah, and then success will be very easy for us, hallelujah, to achieve anything and everything that we need to through Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet, Yisrael. It's been a beautiful day, even though as Riyadh we said, it's somewhat gloomy, discolored, but yet we have the light of Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah, to light our path and light our way. Hallelujah. Abba Yahweh, we told you for this day that you have made, for you have made it, Abba Yahweh. You have given us breath. You have given us life. You have given us your Mitzvah and your Torah on this, on this day. You have fed us well, Abba Yahweh. We told you for that. We do pray for a cold Yisrael that are scattered throughout the Olam, them that we know and them that we do not know, Abba Yahweh. Yet your Ruach HaKodesh rests in us all. So we ask you, Yahweh, to strengthen us, to heal us, Yahweh, make us whole, and Yahshua HaMashiach. We do barak you for those that have listened by via of live stream, those that have traveled near and afar, to be with us here, Abba Yahweh. Take them home safely on this day. And all things we do barak you in the precious and mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do declare, hallelujah, 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 Yahweh, hallelujah. Yahweh, barak kol Yisrael, hallelujah.